spot. It's the best view in the house. Check this out. This is a Lego replica of the HMAS Vampire, the big ship out there. Check that out. Oh. So this is a survival suit. kids this hasn't even got a cannon this is where the cannons are loaded with these massive shells these massive bullets so this is the kitchen kids and a kitchen on a ship like this is called a galley are two v16 engines you can look through them Check it out. Wow. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now just before we get stuck into today's episode, if you haven't seen it already, our merchandise is now live on our website, aussieforkids.com, where you can get all of your favorite Aussie items, like the Aussie hat, made especially for kids' heads, or the mini replica Aussie T. How cool is that? All for our mini Aussie fans. And if you love Aussie that much, you can even get three things in a combo. A hat, a shirt, and a sweatband. All on our website. But one of my favorite items is this one. The Aussie socks with this little touch here. Stay keen, kids, as always. Available right now on our website, aussieforkids.com. In the meantime, kids, enjoy this episode and stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day, Aussie. 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 G'day, Today we've come along to the Australian National Maritime Museum and we're going to explore some really cool ships, some warships, some old ships and even a replica of the Endeavour that Captain Cook arrived in Australia in 1770. Come inside, let's check it out. Wow, have a look at that. Not only are we in one of the most beautiful cities in the whole world, right here in Sydney, but we are gonna to get to go and explore some of these ships, starting with this guy here. Let's go and check it out. All right, kids, I've got a really exciting thing to show you. It's a vampire. It's not an actual vampire, it's a ship called the Vampire. Come check this out. Kids, check this out. This is a Lego replica of the HMAS Vampire, the big ship out there. And it was built by a young boy and his dad, for a school project. How good is that? If you love Lego and you love ships, I reckon you're gonna love this.
What do you think? Do you like my ship? <laughs> How cool is this? Hello. Oh, someone in there. Someone's in there. Hello. Yep. I'll be down there soon. Okay. Cheers. It's amazing. That's how they communicate on the ships. They don't just pick up the phone. They communicate through the voice pipe. Wow. Look at the size of this ship. Guys, this is the HMAS Vampire, and it is 118 meters long, which is bigger than your local football field. It is enormous. sick bay, just like at school. If you get sick, you need to go somewhere to get better. So this is like the sick bay or the hospital on the ship. So this is the kitchen. Kids, and a kitchen on a ship like this is called a galley. This is where they prepare all the food and all of the people on the ship will come to that window there. They'd get served up their food onto their plate and they'd go down the other part of the ship. They'd sit there and enjoy their meal. So once you get your meal from the canteen or the galley, you come down here and you enjoy it in the dining room. Now they, they would have their meals in shifts because as you can see, you can't really fit a couple of hundred people in this dining room at one time, can you? So you get a few of your mates, you come down here, you have a meal, you enjoy it, you talk about the day, and then you probably go off to work or you go off to sleep. This is what's called a recreational room or rec room. So, you know when you have a bit of downtime, you have a bit of screen time and you're sitting usually on the iPad or in front of the TV watching Aussie? Well, that's recreation. And when you're sailing on the ship for months at a time, you need a bit of recreation. So people would come in here and they would sit and they'd read a book, they'd play some cards, and they'd just chill out, have some rec time. But unfortunately, I don't think they had iPads with Aussie on them. Poor thing. All right, kids. So when you look at the outside of this ship, you'll see the big cannons off the front of it. This is where the cannons are loaded with these massive shells, these massive bullets. That is what they fire out of the cannons. And I had learned that this ship can fire a cannon from all the way in Sydney, right here where it sits in Darling Harbour to Parramatta, which is about 30 kilometers or so. And it would take about 13 seconds for it to go through the air and get there. Now, they would only use that if they needed to, if they came up against some kind of threat, some kind of danger, and they needed to defend themselves. But this ship was used usually to transport a fleet from Sydney or from Australia all the way through Southeast Asia, places like Vietnam, be about 200 or so people on this ship at the same time. Amazing, isn't it?
but check that out. Look at the size of those cannons. Massive guns. They're the ones that can fire those shells. That ammunition, 30 kilometers through the distance. That is a long, long way. Okay, this area over here and that cross that I was standing on before doing these ones, that's the helicopter drop zone. Now, this ship can't actually support the weight of a helicopter, crazy, but the helicopter would hover above and carefully the ship personnel would go out and collect things like supplies, food, ammunition, all sorts of things. And that's what happened right there in the helicopter drop zone. Now, this big thing here that has those big cannons out the front, it's called the gun house. Now, not only did it fire ammunition to defend themselves or attack other ships, it would also fire echo shells, which would confuse the enemy radar, so the enemy would think they're somewhere else when they're just cruising along in a different direction, or star shells, which are for illumination, so they could see where they're going. So really, really versatile, pretty clever thing, the old gun house. Hello? Yes. Yes, Aussie. Yeah, that's right. All right. You want me to come and skip of the ship? You want me to drive? All right. I'll see you soon. They want me to come and drive the boat? Let's go. Kids, we're gonna go right upstairs to the top of this amazing ship. Look at that, some more guns up there. We're right up at the top of the ship. Now we're gonna head up to the bridge, which is like the control room. Look at this spot. It's the best view in the house. This is called the galley, and this is where the navigation happens. And navigation means the direction where the ship is going. So it can see things like other ships, it can see the land, it can see all sorts of things, and from here, it can give all the information you need to know so that you can drive in the right direction to get where you need to go. So remember, we saw that voice pipe downstairs? This is one of those. So without the use of telephones or radios or anything, you can just say, yeah, g'day, it's Aussie. Yeah, from the bridge, that's right. We've got a ship up to our left. So just steer the boat to the right. The ship, that's right. To the right, not the left. Perfect, loud and clear. How good is that? This is the ship's horn, it's the fog horn. No, I don't think it's going to sound like that. It's certainly going to be loud. A starboard ship's horn, which means to the right of the ship, and then the port ship's horn, which means to the left. Port left, starboard right. Good job, kids. is a steering wheel. That's how you drive the ship. So I've just found out that the HMAS Vampire has traveled a few million miles in its time. It's decommissioned now, which means it's not actually operational anymore. It stays right here in Sydney. But when it was operational, when it was working, when it was used, it would be more than a few trips to the moon and back, and about 13 trips around the world. Crazy. Yeah, 
there, good. This little beauty. She's called the Advance. And this one is actually a TV star. Yes, it was used in a TV show called Patrol Boat. And that's exactly what it is. It's a patrol boat. It would patrol around in the ocean, just making sure that people are doing the right thing. How cool is Advance? Check this sleek looking thing out. That's a funny looking boat, isn't it? You know what that's called? That is a submarine. And that means it goes down underwater. So all these other ships that we've been looking at, they drive on top of the water. The submarine drives under the water, all the way down below so that people, the enemies, can't see it coming. How clever is that? We're gonna get a chance to go on it and check it out. to go backwards because it's really steep. All right, kids, check this out. This place that I'm standing in here now is called the four ends, which is up the front of the ship. Now, can you see those six cylinder chamber things? That's where the missiles go. And these things here, that is actually one of the missiles that gets fed into there and that can shoot out of that chamber up there. Now this thing here, look at this guy. So this is a survival suit. So if the submarine was hit and it started taking on water, everyone on board, all the sailors, um, would wear one of these, then they'd attach themselves to the lines here and that provides them oxygen. See the line going through there? So that will keep them alive. And then when they're ready, they can go through here. This is the escape hatch. And they go straight up there. And that's how they'd survive if the submarine started taking on water. Amazing, isn't it? So this area that I'm standing in right now is the sleeping quarters and the mess. It's where they would sleep and eat and spend their time when they weren't working. Look at the beds they got to sleep in. Three high, one, two, three, and they'd be stacked on top of each other like that. And it fit a lot of people in here. There were 68 people that sailed on this submarine. But when you're not working, you want to have a bit of downtime, right? So, of course, they've got a TV and they can play some ent entertainment on there. Got an old tape there that has some footy games on it. AFL, my favorite game. And then over here I can see, got an old CD and a tape player. You'll have to ask the grown-ups in your life what a tape is, but that would have kept them entertained and relaxed when they weren't working. So this submarine had an engine, of course, a diesel engine, but there's lots of batteries down there that you can see. There is approximately the equivalent of about 80,000 car batteries that would be used to drive this submarine to power all the power, the lights, the air conditioning, and all the stuff that they needed to run on this submarine. 80,000, that's a lot. This is the kitchen or the galley of the submarine. And this, to feed 68 people working on here would pretty much be cooking food all the time. Things like eggs and some lettuce. And of course, it's a Milo, a great Australian drink that I love to enjoy. So we've come into the control room of the ship you sit here, there'd be, when this thing was working, there'd be people sitting everywhere, but radar and sonar, all sorts of buttons and gadgets, and that allows us to drive the ship and know where we're going. These things here, 
this one here, and then one over the back. They're called periscopes, and they go right up through the water, and they peek out the top of the water, and you can look through them, and you can see off into the distance where you're going. Now come over here, every ship has someone that drives it, right? That's called a coxswain, and that's where the coxswain would sit and drive the submarine. You can see here, the last dive, 15th of February, 1999. So this hasn't been in operation since 1999. It's a long, long time ago. So we're right here in the engine room of the submarine and each side of me to the left and to the right are two V16 engines. Look at the size of them. They're a little bit bigger than your normal car engine, but that would provide so much power to fuel the batteries, to drive this submarine so it can dive to really deep down underneath the ocean and be down there for a couple of days and out at sea for sometimes a month. Come and check out this boat, kids. This is called the Divekin, and it is a replica of a really, really old boat sailed to Australia by Europeans. It comes from the Dutch, and it arrived in Australia in 1806, which is a very, very long time ago. Come and check it out. So you can see, kids, it's a really, really old wooden boat. It was built in 1595. If you think about that, we are in 2024. That's a long, long, long time ago. And it was sailed to Australia by Europeans and they were traders. They traded these things called spices. So come and check these out. They're different spices like cloves. Oh, that smells good. And pepper. You know when you put salt and pepper, or you might see mum and dad or the grown-ups put salt and pepper on their food? That's what these are, they're all spices. This one's star anise, nutmeg. So they would take those around the world and they'd sail on this boat to get there across waters and they'd be on the boat for sometimes years at a time. Now come and check it out. This boat doesn't have a steering wheel. So how do you drive a boat like this? This thing here is called a whip steer. So you'd stand up here, the captain would stand up here and I can see out there, I can see the waves and I can see the land and I can use this, go side to side, back and forth, and that steers the boat through the water. Cheers! <laughs> How good is that for a mug? How good is this one, though? <laughs> you have to be thirsty to have that one. Check this one out, kids. This has even got a cannon, which they would use to protect themselves if they came across any danger. How good is that? Come and check this out kids. This is an amazing ship. Look at all the ropes on it. Wowee. This is called the Endeavour and it was sailed by Captain James Cook when he first arrived in Australia, the first European settlement in Australia in 1770. Come and check it out. This is amazing. Wow. There's ropes everywhere you look. I don't think I've ever seen as many ropes on a ship as I can see today. Now this is a replica. This is not the actual original one. It's rebuilt to look exactly the same as the original Endeavour.
Come down here kids, we'll see where all the crew stayed and lived and ate. So this is where the crew on the Endeavour would eat and it's also where they would sleep. So these hammocks got strung up over top of the tables. There's about 75 people on the Endeavour and they sailed at sea for three years. Unbelievable. Come and have a look at what they used to eat. You can see there a bit of meat. So they would pretty much eat salted meat, sauerkraut and bread for three years while at sea. Sometimes they'd catch some fish, but most of the time it was those three things. No McDonald's, no sushi, no fun stuff, just that. No thanks. So there you go kids, we have had a great time learning all about these amazing ships at the Australian National Maritime Museum here right in Sydney in Darling Harbour. Hope you've loved learning lots of facts about the ships and coming on board some of them with me. Kids, we'll see you on a brand new episode of Aussie this weekend. Until then, stay keen. If you haven't already, make sure you get a grade up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon kids, and until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen kids. Ozzy, 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 Oi! Ozzy is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine.